and welcome to my life as a crazy bug lady. <laughs> I keep tarantulas and I keep scorpions and I keep bugs of all kind and I love them and they are my children. So today I am here to talk about something that's actually really exciting and something that I really had a hard time with when I first delved into this hobby and that is picking out your first tarantula. So it's a really great, exciting, fun time. You've just decided that you want to get a tarantula, you're going to take the plunge, you're going to do it. And I'm so excited for you. <laughs> but first, there are some things that you should know, some things to keep in mind and, you know, just some guidance that I can maybe offer to you that I learned via my experience, which was interesting, <laughs> but I mean, it worked out because look at me now. I'm literally surrounded in this room by tarantulas and other things. Let's start right in. So for tip number one, it's gonna be, you, it's not really a tip. Suggestion number one, step number one, step number one, when picking out your first tarantula is going to be deciding where you're gonna get it from. There are some people who are really lucky and they have a local pet store that really is knowledgeable. Ow, I have a new piercing. Anyways, you may have a local pet store that is really knowledgeable about tarantulas and they keep them well, they have a good variety, they can give you information, um, their tarantula will be healthy. Um, if you have access to that, awesome. <laughs> You're lucky. You should know that. If not, then you may want to order online. And this may sound crazy. Um, I know when I first found out that you can order tarantulas online, I was like, what? <laughs> How could that be? But actually, I've ordered almost all my tarantulas online and I have really never had a bad experience. Now, you may be asking, um, can I go to my local chain pet store? Big name pet store. Pet Schmo or Pet Schmart, if you will. Um, you could, but you're running a risk there because they are a bit notorious for selling older or unhealthy animals. So I would maybe proceed with caution if you want to do that. I won't say don't do it, but I will say just make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into as I've heard a lot of reports of people getting older or unwell animals and your animal will also most likely be have been kept in a very poor environment, so don't follow their lead for housing. But you can do it if you want, if you want. Back to ordering online. Um, I'll give you a couple names of places that I've ordered from online and had really great experiences. Um, let me get my list. <laughs> First would be Micro Wilderness. Almost all of my tarantulas are now from Micro Wilderness because I've just had a really good experience with them and I can recommend with confidence that you will too. Um, Fear Not Tarantulas is really great. I've heard a lot of people having great experiences with them. I got my first tarantulas from them, still have them, they're still kicking, they're doing great. Uh, also Peladin Exotics, I don't hear a lot of people talk about that, but I did get some tarantulas and scorpions from them and it went really well, so I enjoyed. Um, when you're finding a place online, there are a few red flags that I look for when picking if a place is legit or not. And that would be, um, the first thing I'd watch out for is that if they offer a really cheap shipping price, it's probably too good to be true. Um, legally shipping tarantulas is not cheap because they are venomous and they are, there are special shipping programs that have to be implemented when shipping a tarantula legally. You cannot throw it in USPS priority mail. It's not, it's not safe. They don't know that they have a tarantula in there. It's just not cool. So whereas FedEx has special program for shipping venomous animals. So that is a good legal and reliable way to transport a tarantula. So if someone says $5 shipping, they're probably not doing it legit. Um, you should expect to pay about $50 for shipping a tarantula because that's just how much it costs for the person to ship it to you. That's how it is. You want to do it, you want to do it right. Like this is a pet, you're getting it, you're going to care for it. Make sure it gets to you safely. 
If the price of the tarantula itself is really low, I would also be wary. If they're selling you an adult tarantula for 10 bucks, I would be skeptical. If they're selling you a sling for $5, I would be maybe questioning that. But um, most tarantulas, um, it's hard to say. Here in the US, you would most likely pay between 20 to, could be in the hundreds for a rare sling. Um, for an adult, you'll probably be paying at least $100 and up from there for a good, healthy adult tarantula. So if the price is too good to be true, it probably is. And the third thing I would keep in mind is to look for their live arrival guarantee or lag policy. So this will have to do with if your tarantula has any issues on the way, will they replace it? Will they give you a new tarantula? Will they give you a refund? What will happen? They should at least mention um, one way or the other because you should know going into it if you are taking the risk, which you know maybe they won't replace it, which is fine, some places don't, um, or if they will replace it, I feel like you should at least know. And they should mention that. So if they don't, I would at least ask. Now that you've decided where you're gonna get your tarantula from, the next big step that you're gonna have to decide is if you're going to be getting a sling or if you're going to be getting an adult tarantula. So I feel as though most people often start with slings. I started with a sling. Sling is short for spiderling, which is a baby tarantula. So cute. So um, you'll see that slings are really readily available. And so you may want to jump in and buy some slings to begin with like I did, um, or you may want to start with an adult. There are some pros and cons to each side. And one of the major ones would be how much space it's going to take up. Um, a sling, small tarantula, which you're often going to see when they give you the size of the tarantula, well, it will be measured in the diagonal leg span. So if you see that the tarantula is a half inch sling, do be aware that you are going to be getting something like that big. Just so you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. My first tarantulas were, I got a half inch, a quarter inch, which was super microscopic, and then a one inch, which was like, you know. And um, that's how you know what size you're getting. So just be aware that if you buy a half inch sling tarantula, it's going to look like a little house spider, but it will get bigger. <laughs> you get something like a half inch sling, you can keep it in something like this, which is a nice little small container barely takes up any space, super easy to store on your shelf, won't take up any room in your home, nothing to worry about. wonder if I could show you this little guy. He's right there. So that's an option. If you want to go for something more like a one to one and a half inch tarantula, you're looking at keeping it in something like this. Aw oh, man, he was in here, but he just tunneled down. Um, this would be appropriate. Also doesn't take up a lot of space, you know, easy to store on the shelf as well. Um, and then maybe you're going to want to go for an adult, which is great if you want to go for an adult. This is my, she's hiding. My curly hair tarantula lives in here. You can see her little booty. Um, this, this as you can see, it takes up more space. So you know, if you want to have something that's going to take up a good amount of space, if you have an open shelf, if you're ready for it, then, you know, you can get a big one. But that's something to keep in mind. Also, another thing to keep in mind when you're getting adult versus sling is the um, durability of the animal. Some slings can be prone to pass away for very simple reasons, whereas adults, I feel like you get a little bit more leeway in seeing if they're healthy, if they're not. Like, you'll, if there's an issue, you'll most likely know before they just keel over and die, if that makes sense. Um, the next thing I would keep in mind is price. Slings are incredibly cheaper than adults. Um, a sling you can get for like a quarter of a price of an adult or less. They are very cost effective. So if you want to get a few to add to your collection, you might want to start with slings because then you can afford to get more tarantulas. Whereas if you get an adult, you're going to be dropping a lot more money, especially if you drop um, a uh, female. Most people do love females because they live longer, they're a little bigger. Oh, I have a foot cramp. <sighs> it hurts. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, slings 
can be very inexpensive. Adults can be very expensive. So working with your budget, um, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Um, the next thing to keep in mind is lifespan. If you get a sling, you're going to have it for a long time. You're going to watch it grow. You're going to watch it mature. You're going to go through all the molts, which is really fun. Um, if you have an adult, you will likely still have it for a good amount of time as tarantulas can live like 20 plus years. But um, there is always a chance you could get an older tarantula or a mature male or a tarantula that is about to become a mature male, in which sense um, won't live very long. Um, most trustworthy breeders will not sell you an adult male unless you ask for it on purpose, but um, it is something to keep in mind. So um, now that you've decided what tarantula you're getting a sling, you're getting an adult. The next thing I would look into would be um, old world versus new world. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say you should probably get a new world. New world tarantulas come from the new world, the Americas and such, as the old worlds come from the old world. Yeah, new worlds move a lot slower, they're way less aggressive, and their venom is way more mild. As old worlds are the opposite, super lightning fast, super crazy and they hate you and they want to eat you, and their venom can do some harm to you. Unless you have done a lot of research and you feel really confident that you're ready for an old world, I would probably go with a new world. Um, just trust me on that one. Now that you've decided that you're getting a new world, right, you're probably gonna have to decide, well, you are gonna have to decide what exact tarantula you're gonna be getting. And when you're browsing the site or you're browsing the pet store, you probably see that there are a lot of options. You're gonna see Gramostola pulchropes, Tililocotyl alba pelosum, Lasiodora para hibana, Brachypelma smithy, and you're probably gonna be like, whoa, that's a lot. And it is. But you should keep these things in mind when you're picking which tarantula you're gonna get. So the first thing I would keep into mind keep in mind is the size of the tarantula. Some tarantulas get huge, like we're talking 12 inch leg span if you want a goliath bird eater. But some tarantulas stay really small. Some stay really small, like uh, dwarf species, such as the heart butt tarantula or the Cereocosmus elegans, which are adorable, and they only get a couple inches. So keep in mind when you're picking your tarantula, if it's gonna get huge and you're gonna have to get a huge container for it, it's gonna stay really small. The second thing I would keep in mind would be how the tarantula looks, because this is gonna be your pet and you're probably gonna have it for a long time. So you want it to look cool, you want to enjoy it. And maybe you want something really colorful, like the Brachypelma Hamori with the cool orange and red knees, or maybe you really like the cute look of a brown spider, like the Afona Palmahensi, which are just like cute little dudes. I love them. You know, there are a lot of options, and since this is gonna be your pet, you wanna love it. You wanna love how it looks. So, you know, do some research and Google, you know, blue tarantula, green tarantula, colorful tarantula, and see what comes up and look into it until you find a look of a tarantula that you love because you're gonna provide the best care and you're gonna have the most fun with the animal that you're most excited to have. So make sure that you like how it looks. Duh. The next thing to keep in mind would be the, the, especially if you're getting a sling, would be the speed of the growth. Now some slings, like if you get a rose hair or the Gramostola rosea or porteri, they grow slow as a snail. So if you get a half inch sling, you are gonna have years until you have a full on tarantula. Whereas if you get something like the Tililocotyl albopilosum or the curly hair tarantula, you will have a large adult tarantula in a couple years. If you have the patience, if you're ready, if you are fine with it, you can get a cheap tarantula sling that will grow to a nice, big, beautiful adult if you have the time and patience to wait five years for it. Tarantulas grow at vastly different speeds, so you want to keep that in mind when picking out which one you're going to be getting. The next thing I would keep in mind is the care requirements. Some tarantulas require a lot of humidity, some require less, some need more heat so you'll have to keep your home warmer, some they like cooler temperatures, some 
are or arboreal, so they will need a vertical enclosure. Some, you know, most are terrestrial, so they'll need a basic, you know, like that enclosure. Some are fossorial, meaning they'll need a lot of substrate. They'll be buried a lot. They'll be in the bottom of their enclosure. Will you be able to provide these requirements? Will it be a huge inconvenience to you? Keep it in mind. So these are all things that you should keep in mind when looking for your specific tarantula. I recommend just find, look at the names of each one available and just Google it. And find the pictures, see how it looks, watch videos of people who have that specific species. Tarantula Collective does an amazing job of breaking down each specific species and telling you how to care for it, what to expect. So I would highly recommend going over there and checking out those videos for species specific care videos so you can really get a good grasp on what you're going to get. So now that we've gone over all that, you know where you're going to get it from, you know if you're getting a new world or old world, you know if you're going to get a slinger adult and you have that exact species picked out, you're going to want to keep in mind the delivery process. So and I'm assuming that you're shopping online here. So if you are doing a proper legal shipping method, you will have to know that sometimes they can deliver to your door. Sometimes you'll have to go pick it up at the local FedEx hub. And you should know this going into it. You know, will you have to go get it? Are the temperatures right for shipping? The seller should let you know all of that information, but you're just gonna wanna be prepared. Make sure the home is prepared for them. Make sure you know exactly, you know, what kind of enclosure they're gonna need. Make sure you have your feeders ready and you're ready to receive your new little friend. I think that these are the things that I wish that I knew going into purchasing my first tarantulas. Um, I do want to do um, more specific videos about beginner tarantula care. I want to do like my top three favorite species and some more information like that. If you have any specific questions that I can answer, let me know. If you have any specific videos that you'd like to see, please let me know because I would love to make your life easier when it comes to caring for these beautiful, amazing creatures. But I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. I really hope that you have an awesome time picking out your first tarantula. I'm very excited for you. I'll see you next time. I really hope you enjoyed. Go befriend a spider. Go get us tarantula. Go have a great day. And make sure to subscribe, please, if you have not comment, like the video. I appreciate it. All of my animals appreciate it. I tell them every day that they have supporters. Have a great day. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you. And that's the cat.